Hi, I'm Monica Scott Pierce, Interim Executive Director of Christian Churches Together. Christian Churches Together is an ecumenical organization that was founded about 20 years ago and which represents the broadest fellowship of Christians in the United States. It includes five families of Christians, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, Orthodox churches, Evangelical Pentecostal churches, historic Black churches, and mainline Protestant Christians as we work together across difference. This week, CCT, or Christian Churches Together, is joining our brothers and sisters around the world and observing the week of prayer for Christian unity. In an earlier video this week, I introduced you to some materials that were provided by the Pontifical Council for Christian Unity from the Roman Catholic Church and the Commission on Faith and Order of the World Council of Churches. Today is day three of the week of prayer for Christian unity. And so I will share with you today a reflection from that resource material, as well as a scripture and prayer. There are a number of different readings provided here. The one that I will be reading for today is from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We'll begin with verse 13. But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits of salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose, he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the resource material for the week of prayer for Christian unity on day three, the reflection reminds us that the Lord has come amongst us. God dwells with us. And Christ's coming disturbs the ways of the world. In contrast to so many other leaders, the Lord comes in humility, denouncing the evil of injustice and oppression that accompanies the ambition for power and status. The coming of Jesus calls for a change of heart and a transformation of life so that people will be liberated from all that dehumanizes them and causes them suffering. Jesus shows us that God is with those who suffer because each person has a dignity as God's beloved child. Thus, Jesus' presence creates disturbance precisely because he rocks the boat of those who work only for their own interests and neglect the common good. <clears throat> But for those who work for peace and unity, Christ's coming brings the light of hope. Today, we are invited to commit ourselves to the consistent action of making justice a reality in the world. This implies the need to reflect and acknowledge the instances when our ways are not God's ways of justice and peace. When Christians work together for justice and peace, our efforts are more powerful. And when Christians work together in this way, the answer to our prayer for Christian unity is made visible, such that others recognize in us Christ's presence in the world today. Through our words and actions, we can bring the light of hope to so many who are still living in the darkness of political unrest, social poverty, and structural discrimination. The good news is that God is faithful, and he is always the one strengthening us and protecting us from harm and inspiring us to work for the good of others, especially those living in the darkness of suffering, hatred, violence, and pain. In my work of Christian unity in the ecumenical world, one of the things that I have learned is 
that we cannot have unity without reconciliation and justice. We cannot have unity without reconciliation and justice. That is, reconciliation and justice are constitutive. They're essential to Christian unity. This is one of the reasons why when participants of Christian churches together meet, issues of justice, peace, and reconciliation are at the forefront of our conversations. And we meet um, several times a year, but have a single convocation or annual forum in which we tend to talk about these issues of justice um, or injustice in our own context in the United States. At many of these convocations, we have produced a statement. Um, and you can find those on our website here in which we pro publicly proclaim uh, that racism, extreme poverty, injustice and violence are all a denial of the grace of God, which God offers everyone. Therefore, we as Christian churches together have committed to partnering with each other, with, with other churches, even with those who might seem like unlikely partners in our work toward justice, so that our common witness might be to the one who reconciles us in Christ, to God who is one. And close out today with prayer. So will you join me in praying the prayer that's in the resource materials for today? Oh Lord, you have guided us out of darkness to Jesus. You have illumined the star of hope in our lives. Help us to be united in our commitment to bring about your reign of love, justice, and peace. And so to be the light of hope to all those living in the darkness of despair and disillusionment. Take our hand, Lord, so we can show you, see you in our daily lives. As we follow you, remove our fear and anxiety. Shine your light upon us and set our hearts on fire so that your love surrounds us with warmth. Lift us up to you, you who have emptied your, yourself for our sake so that our lives may glorify you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for this third day of the Week of Prayer for Christian Unity. I'll be back again tomorrow for day four to share the resource material and a reflection with you on Christian unity. God bless.